But, you know, 2021 has its, its own challenges and we're off to a start, you know. So, you know, be in for the long run, man. And, and um, like I said, I've just been uh, thinking about uh, the status of not just, you know, the nation, but the world, you know, COVID season, you know, social upheaval season. Um, people need healing. So I hope that to start off this uh season that there can be a little bit of that for, for each person and I'm not the healer um, but um, that's going to inquire some self introspection man it's about how you resonate with the words and information that you receive and, and are you loving yourself enough to sit back and reflect without being reactionary to take a moment and, and to think individually not as a group not because of what uh, one person says, but your own individual self-preservation. Because as we saw at the Capitol, anybody can, you know, for lack of a better term, get gone at any time. And I'm not talking about anybody that wants to play a victim card on the Democratic side or anybody that wants to play a victimless card on the Republican side. And I don't even care about those sides. I'm just saying overall, all around, there were good people that were killed and, and um, families that were destroyed you know, people want to talk about uh, civil wars and whatnot. You know, I'm a historian, man. And you look back at that. I don't care, you know, what race, color, creed you are, black, white, brown, Puerto Rican, Asian, any persuasion. I don't care, man. You can look back at that. There was there was a lot of hardship and a lot of people obviously are, are not over it. And I'm talking about loss of lives on massive scales, families torn apart um, because of ideologies and really just um, deep seated ignorance i'm not even going to say hate because um when you're ignorant you're hating a situation and maybe a concept but the reality of what you're hating really doesn't exist so that's why i like to you know consider it ignorant ignorance on any part all right and you know you need to be really informed I would say to say you hate something. You got to be really informed and have a deep association and in and out intricately detailed knowledge of something, man, to say you hate it. How can you hate what you don't know? You ever seen people, you know, go to a restaurant and they say, uh, you know, uh, I don't I don't like vegetables. I don't like this dish. Let's just say any dish. And you like you don't. But they never had it. You know what I mean? That's ignorance. And that's the same thing we see in society, man. So yeah, think about it. It's ignorance, man, to hate something. I mean, you could be suspicious of it. That's warranted, man. We have a right to be suspicious of a lot of things. I went on my walk today and there were about, you know, 50 geese in the center of the field. I was suspicious of them. I hadn't met them before. I knew something about some of geese I've seen before. I've seen some geese be attacked and I've seen some geese that are loving. So I approached it. And assess the situation and found out, you know what? They wanted the same thing I wanted, man. Some peace. They didn't want to be disturbed while the females ate. And they wanted some peace. And I did too, man. So, you know, you have to build relationships and get to know people. Uh, I'm going to talk more about that, man. We'll be back in a moment. You're listening to Let's Chew the Gum now. It just happened. Appreciate you listening. Welcome to Let's Chew the Gum. I'm your host, Protocol. We talk a lot about a lot of things in this show. While we chew the gum, and just like every show, we always have something for your mind. so exciting to be back for season two of let's chew the gum the podcast where we talk about everything from a to z while we chew the gum um definitely uh i have my piece of gum right now uh, some folks always ask again why do we chew the gum it's just a metaphor man for let's talk let's chew the fat let's chew the gum so 
we're chewing some gum and we're having conversations. Um, again, I'm excited to be back this this uh, season for season two. I appreciate all of the support from around the world for season one and all the people I've interacted with. I'm going to just jump right into it. This episode uh, is timely that it starts during Black History Month with so much going on in the in the country. But uh, today I want to talk about the main reason for black history, and that's white supremacy. You heard it. The main reason for black history is white supremacy. Without white supremacy, we wouldn't need black history. It wouldn't be a call for it because there'd probably be some equity, some equality. Um, let me say this. Shocker alert. Shocker alert. I understand white supremacists. I, I really do. I, I, I get it. I really get it. I mean, um, and if you don't get it, try. Try to try to try to understand. I didn't say accept because you understand something don't doesn't mean you agree or accept. But I understand. So let, let's go back. Uh, during slavery times. There was no need for uh, white supremacy because with all the laws in favor of the slaveholding population. Why do you need to have individual citizens act out in a way to reduce white supremacy? Makes sense to me. There was no need. But as slavery ends and the large populations, oftentimes the majority populations of black people in the South uh, gain the right to vote. Well, that eliminated that uh, supremacy, that inbred supremacy, right? Because now blacks are able to vote. You get the first state representatives. You get some of the first uh, black leaders in various communities. And if I am a former slaveholder or maybe even a non-slaveholder perhaps in the South at this time. And all of a sudden my former slave or the former slave populations are now the town council persons, legislators, uh, mayors, sheriffs, whatever. I think psychologically I might be disturbed too. yesterday. You were my slave. Yesterday, I was in a position of authority, and today, I'm not. Now, that's why I say I understand. Psychologically, that would mess me up. However, people, we are in 2021, and, you know, that's a bit outdated. People are quick to say, forget slavery, forget this, you know. Well, forget that. Forget that that aspect of white supremacy, right? Um and what what even is white? We'll, we'll talk about that, because for me, that that doesn't exist. Social constructs that were designed to divide people and empower others. They don't exist. So it's time for us to catch up with the times. And, and again, I'll talk more about that later uh, at the intro. That intro was actually a response to a, a question I was asked. And I was just candidly talking to someone about uh, the situations that were were going on and and. Uh, it sparked episode one, which is the one you're hearing now. So I won't have any guests today. I, you are my guest today. Um, feel free to email me any questions you have about the show or any questions you have or um, in general topics you'd like to hear uh, me discuss on the show this year. Or if you'd like to be a guest, feel free. Email me at let's chew the gum at gmail dot com. Let's chew the gum at gmail dot com. All right. Be sure to catch this episode and more uh, weekly. Um, I'm hoping to stay on weekly. We will see how that goes. Um, but you'll you'll be the first to know. So getting back to it, yes, I I, I do understand that uh, the white white supremacy. Um, however, like I said, it's, it's 2021. It's it's outdated, and um, there there's new things that are going on. I also understand that there's no such thing as white. Right. This is a construct that was created. And, and, I, and I hope people that are listening, whether you're black, white, brown or whatever, including white supremacists, I hope you're listening too. you know, there was a time when 
None of those things matter. People didn't identify as white. And as I said, there was no such thing. Folks identified with their country of origin, Germany, England, Spain, France, Italy, Poland, whatever. Right. People identified as, as that. Um, but there are some structures, some things that that occurred in our country to cause this term white to come into existence. Many of you know, and if you don't know, shocker alert, there were white slaves in America. And before everyone jumps on this with Irish, I'm not talking about Irish. Yeah, Irish were, well, they had a, a tough time and the, the conflicts with the Irish and the British go back centuries. The conflict with Irish because they were Catholic and Protestant Americans go back to the start of this country. But I'm not referring to Irish slavery. I'm talking about white slavery. I'm talking about slaves that were uh, enslaved by the British and the Americas for whatever reason, whether it was uh, because they were in debt or, or what have you. But one thing occurred in America, you know, you had white slaves, black slaves, Native American slaves, and they would all work together. They worked together, lived together, cried together, died together, right? Complied together, whatever. And they became a formidable force, right? There was intermarriages, interrelationships, etc. But the elite class, the gentry, if you will, the landowners, they saw that this particular group would become too powerful. And the best way to disempower a group is to divide them. So why not introduce or make this thing called whiteness have some meaning right if you recall those in power were white male property owners so if you're a poor white you didn't you didn't have power you didn't have power right you didn't have a say so because you were not a landowner so with just the simple adjustment in policy, all whites, well, white males, sorry, ladies, white males were now given the rights. All white males were given the rights to participate in the political process. So what does that do? Uh, maybe you were white and, and, and or there were whites and like I said, blacks and uh, brown people or native people working in conjunction with each other. But now, hey, if I'm a white male, sorry, you know, my black friends and brown friends. Hey, they're inviting me over to this this club that had been exclusive and I really want to get in. They're recognizing me. So, you know, I know we're friends and, and we worked and lived together, but I'm going to go on over to this side and see what that's like, because I'm white and now I can have a say. So what does that do that effectively divided a formidable group of individuals? It made white into a category gave it some some meaning for some folks and so that slowly took away the power structure of the people the cooperative power structure of the people you understand what i'm saying so now um and and trust me poor whites they didn't they didn't want you they didn't really care about you they used you they used you to vote and it's still happening today you voted for them because you look like them and they look like you but they didn't care about you it's evident today if, if if it wasn't true why do we still have even a phrase poor whites why is that a thing why do people still talk about poor whites or even some whites in your own community will call you poor white trash right they didn't they didn't care about you if if whiteness was really a thing then every white person in america would be benefiting from that all right. So, you know, think a little bit about that. Get a little bit deeper into that that concept. There's no such thing as white. They they used you. They bamboozled you. But the effect that it had was that it separated many who were ignorant from their black and brown brothers and sisters. The only color they ever cared about was green. But it was convenient for them to use skin tones to you know effectively 
execute their purposes of maintaining their particular power, their supremacy, right? Which has had nothing to do with white. Um, and as I said, as, as evident, if you are white in this country or anybody who has, you know, a perception visually or otherwise, why aren't all white people benefiting from that process? They, they never wanted you. It was never about that. So that's why I say, you know, white supremacy was the cause of black history. Right. That was the catalyst. Effectively, as generations went on, people didn't think about that bit of history that I gave. Um, it was just known to you that you were white. Someone else was black. And as laws were implemented that made, you know, skin tones uh, competitive, people just accepted it over time. People didn't talk about it. It was inbred in, in the system. And now it's a part of our system. We can see as much with the, the recent uh, riots at the Capitol, whatever you want to call them, uprisings, insurgency, coup attempt, whatever. All right. Why, why are so many people um, involved in that? Who's been, you know, kind of pulling their coattails and, and talking to them about you know, life or their particular social and political status to where they're so upset? Right. Was was it was it really because of the loss of a political candidate? Could be. Did their life not become great again? Could be. Or is it any of the underlying uh, reasons that were given for the uprising? I don't know. But but this episode is, is really about that. Do you guys know that, you know, people, black, white, brown, have, have worked together in this country for a long time? There's so many of, of us that have worked together in coalitions for the betterment of our communities. Right. As opposed to fighting and destroying each other. Uh, when you when you think about it, as I've said before to many people, the reason a lot of this stuff occurs is because when when people are dissatisfied with their lives or their situation, when they've been wronged, the first thing that people do often is blame someone else. And because of the way our country has been set up, who is easiest to blame? someone that doesn't look like you, right? If it wasn't for those brown people, I'd have what I have. If it wasn't for those immigrants, I'd have what I have. If it wasn't for those black people, I'd have what I have. If it wasn't for whoever, fill in the blank. That's just not true. Just not true, right? In situations like that, people want to blame someone of another color. But in other situations, people, you know, will talk about, you know, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, hard work, dedication, et cetera, et cetera. What happened? What happened to that? It's not someone else's fault that 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 occurred to you. It's still the same system that created this term whiteness, the same system that bamboozled you and uh, really didn't want you as a part of their social structure. That's doing it now. Look at let's look at the Great Migration. Let's look at the times when African Americans were trying to improve their lot by moving north, right? Let's look at that situation. As they moved north into northern cities, Detroit, Baltimore, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Philadelphia, Boston, New York, right? Not that there weren't always blacks there already, right? But as this influx comes in, you know, this was advertised in the South. It's much like the movie The Grapes of Wrath. They're advertising for jobs. Uh, move to the north, you know, plenty of work, different factories, right? The Industrial Revolution had peaked and, and things were uh, operating at 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 at, uh, at prime levels, I suppose. There was a great need, especially around the time of World War One. But when blacks go to those cities, the employers. As a business person, just like today, you want to eliminate as much overhead as possible. And because blacks had come from a repressive situation in the South, it made them a vulnerable population, uh, which affected uh, wage wars. 
um, because now these factory owners, business persons, they can hire maybe, I don't know, two or three black folks for the cost that it would be of one white person. Now, I didn't get the exact figures on that, but you get my point. So if you're white in that situation and you happen to have lost a job or can't get a job because this new factory is hiring lots of black people. Well, who do you blame? Who are you blaming? You look at those black people. If it wasn't for them, you'd have that job, right? Well, is it the black person's fault that's wanted to improve themselves or is it these large businesses or corporations that are pitting us against each other? Same happens today. I hear the same you know, thing about if, if Mexicans weren't coming in, they, we'd have these jobs, whatever. I hear the same thing. But what you ultimately need to know and understand is that all people want the same things. We want peace, right? It's not about fighting over race. People are fighting over resources. People want good jobs. They want clean water, decent food, decent schools, safe neighborhoods. We all want that. I don't care if you're from Wall Street or Martin Luther King Boulevard. Everybody wants that. And again, when you don't get it, who do you blame? Someone that doesn't look like you. you. You take the easy way out. You don't think like the, you know, the miners in, in West Virginia and the Appalachia in the early 20s, the rednecks, the original rednecks, right? I don't have a problem with rednecks. I have a problem with ignorance. But when we talk about rednecks and we, we you look back at those miners, they, they were called rednecks people because, because they wore red bandanas around their necks to protect from cold dust around their faces or whatever to pull up or whatever. But it was also a solidifying theme amongst whites, blacks and other immigrants in those mines. And they unionized. They got together. They understood that there was a power in unity that if they formed together, then these owners, these miners, these wealthy folks, these elite would have no choice but to deal with them on a basis of equity and not be able to divide them over race because the whole time while people are fighting over race, someone is benefiting from that. And it's usually the person in power. I saw a cartoon the other day and there was a gentleman of European descent looked pretty wealthy based upon his clothes. And the other two, based upon their perceived phenotype, was a black guy and a white guy. And the wealthy person had a plate of cookies, large plate of cookies. I don't know if it was a dozen or more. The white person had a saucer or a smaller plate with one cookie on it. And the black person in the cartoon didn't have a plate at all or any cookies. He's sitting there contemplating on how he can get some cookies. So while this a uh, guy of European descent, this wealthy person has this huge plate of cookies and the other white person is perceivably, percept, perceivably <laughs> a worker had one. The elite guy with all the cookies told the white guy, hey, that guy over there, watch out for him. He wants to take your cookie. He wants to take your cookie, your single cookie. So while he has dozens and dozens He's trying to pit the two against each other. So they'll fight over it. They'll never come together to realize that this elite person is bamboozling them. That is really the elite person that has this greed. He could have given the uh, or let the black person earn whatever you want to call it, a cookie. And there would have been equity. But it's beneficial for him to have those others blindly fighting. They'll never look up at him and realize, hey, why don't we get together? Hell, they could have gotten together and, and started their own bakery, but they're so busy fighting each other over that situation. So that's that's just how things happen in this country. I'm going to take a quick break. And uh, when I come back, we'll discuss more. You're listening to Let's Chew the Gum, the podcast where we talk about anything and everything from A to D, A to Z season two. Be right back. Something for your mind, 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 mind. Something for your mind. 
If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it could be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast also with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So what are you waiting for? Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Okay, welcome back to the podcast. Let's chew the gum, the podcast where we talk about everything from A to Z and everything in between. So we've been talking about the underlying cause for Black History Month, which I firmly stated is because of white supremacy. And um, let's just get right back into it. I was talking before the break about people fighting over resources and people not recognizing that it's actually resources that we want. And, you know, if we work together, we can definitely amass the resources that we need. We just need to make sure we're focusing on the perpetrator of the problems that we're having as opposed to each other. You know, people talk about crabs uh, fighting in a barrel and pulling each other down. That's not just about people that are like you. You know, we're doing that same thing within our country among races. So, guys, be smarter than than what you do is is basically what I'm asking you uh, to consider. Right. Um, There's so much turmoil right now. You know, this is taking years to get to this point and it's going to take some time to get over it. Right. We need to educate our young people, but we also need to re-educate our old, older people, our elders. Sometimes they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but old dogs can learn new things. People will, will make choices. You know, once you learn this information about your history and about yourself, you 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 make the choice if you want to stay. Um, notice in this whole conversation, I have not talked about anything as far as Democrats or Republicans, because this is not a Democrat or Republican issue. There are just as many racist people in both parties because race is. How can I say it, it, it transcends party lines? So let's not I'm not going to get into the, the conversation about this group or that group. As far as I'm concerned, there's enough blame to be spread around. But I will offer an alternative because I know a lot of people who have defected from the Republican Party because of some of the events that have happened and they become, I guess, Democrats. I don't know how you switch an ideology overnight. Right. Um, your, Your whole ideology changed or perhaps you weren't so tied to that ideology in the first place. I I don't I don't know. Um. And likewise, I've known people to switch party allegiances throughout. The problem that I see is, though, guys, the reason we have so much issue with this is because at over 360 million, whatever amount of people we have in this country now, how can all the people fit into two categories? Have you logically thought about that? Uh, You know, they're independent parties, of course. But for the most part, we hear Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Republican. How can we all be fit into two parties? That's that's the problem that that we have. One of the problems, you know, our country uh, is too large for a democracy, an ideal democracy, an ideal democracy, according to our founding fathers, 25000 people, maybe, you know, once you start amassing so much, it becomes difficult. You know, so we are a very large democracy. We are a very large population. Two political parties cannot uh, contain the various ideologies that folks have. So I know lots of people who are registered as Republican, but they have liberal ideas. Right. Maybe they're conservative in one area. Let's say family values, but they're more liberal in economics. And maybe there's some people who are consider themselves Democrats and they're liberal in terms of their policies on on uh, immigration, but very conservative in, when it comes to religion. Um, it, it's difficult to do. So why put yourselves through that? Um, I've always been one to not be a voter among party lines. I vote for who has the best idea, proven track record and who's really going to do something. The idea the person that's going to do something about the community that I live in. And sometimes that's been Democrat. Sometimes it's been Republican. Sometimes it's been independent. Right. So that that's that's the thing there. But for all of those. 
folks that are sort of reeling and, and don't know which way to go. Um, I'm going to talk to my, my white brothers and sisters right now, I'm talking to everybody, but particularly to them. What about if you had an alternative party? Remember some years ago, the Tea Party came out. They were, were, were an alternative to the traditional Republican Party. How about an alternative party? You can call it what you want. A lot of people are caught up in these categories. I said white doesn't exist as a, as a reality. Um, how about the alt-white? All right. You had the alt-right. How about the alt-white party? For all those folks that are dissatisfied with the way um, both political parties may be going um, right now, how about alt white alternative party? Right? How are you can call it off white, alt right or off white? Right? Come together and have your own platform because I, I'm I'm sick of the narrative too. I know so many people that um, happen to be white that are disgusted. And have been for a long time with racism and discrimination. It doesn't fit them. So I, I don't like when people even say the phrase white people. I don't like the phrase black people as if we're, we're all alike. I'm not like every other black person. Every other black person is not like me. And I know a lot of you that are listening are aware of that. But there's so many people that that don't think on those levels. We're not all alike. Right. Like the Democratic Party is not the party of black people. You hear oftentimes about a black Republican and people are like so amazed that there are black Republicans. Right. What? what everyone's not alike. It's not a, about race. And I wish that people could understand that. But because we have these systems and categorizations that 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 are bound, um, make it work to your advantage. I would I would, you know, be thrilled to work with folks who wanted to seek an alternative. So alt white alt white off white political party for those folks that are just done with the shenanigans from both parties. You don't have to categorize yourself. You know, now it's, you know, if people say, oh, you're a Republican and you're white and they, this, you're racist. No, I, I know that's not true. I know that's not necessarily true. Right. Not necessarily. Um, and again, there's racism everywhere just like you know people always assume racism was in the south well it was very prevalent in the north as well but racism only came about and became necessary when our government failed to act for the best interests of all people you see for some people they have a vested interest in racism continuing like i said just like the guy at the table the wealthy guy if, as long as racism and infighting amongst the population is prevalent some people are benefiting from that and you know for them they don't have an interest in ending policies or enacting policies that would or supporting policies that would do away with, with racism because like in the past when I told you about the black slaves white slaves brown slaves working together if those types of things happen it's a direct threat to a certain power structure so we, you need to be smarter than that and realize right and again, as, as I said before, um, if, if white was a thing, why, why is the majority of population in America? Impoverished population, you can go by overall or percentages. Uh, white people that have not taken advantage of been able to take advantage of the quote unquote American dream. You know, go back to Dr. King. You, you want to even look at the Black Panther Party, whatever you want to look at any example historically that had at its core the inclusion of all races or they got to a point where they realized the power or the, the, the people uh, lied in the fact of people uniting together. Dr. King spoke about, you know, equal rights for blacks for many, many years. You know, obviously from Atlanta, he's black. Charity begins at home, but he tapped into the power when he realized and when he started his poor people's campaign, he went to assist and, and advise on issues that folks in Appalachia were existing or were, were having. Right. Put the poorest, the poor white folks on the Black Panther Party, um, some of the same issues. So you had, you know, people who were Caucasian that were associated and, and affiliated because it was about a social movement for all people. 
right? So don't get caught up and, and don't be bamboozled, right? Figure this out, um, figure it out. I don't care if you call yourself a redneck or whatever you call yourself, right? Figure it out. We can do better. But if you want better, you have to think better. So, you know, act in, a, in, a, in an appropriate way. Um, reach out to me if you would like some resources. I'm, I'm happy to email you some resources and support you in this journey. But um, no, Black History Month. I'm glad to have it. I wish we didn't need to have it, but we only have it because of white supremacy. I hope that you have enjoyed this first episode. Um, I purposely didn't have a guest today. I continue to uh, be thankful for your your listening. Um, you can find this podcast on any platform where podcasts are broadcast. Um, tell a friend, come back with a friend, email me. Let's chew the gum at gmail dot com. Um, I hope to to have more for your edification throughout this season. I look forward to hearing from you. And remember, we always have, have. something for your.